Now we're going to come back to Kirk on engaging with video gamers. All right. So as I mentioned, the first go, I did a four week intensive on gaming fundraising and try to go through that a little bit. So if you're doing event fundraising, you're probably doing things like golf tournaments, peer to peer events, pledge drives and telethons. When you're talking about video game fundraising and streaming fundraising, it's all of these put together all in one. So if you think of it like a golf tournament, you've got gamers participating, you've got people who are doing things for charity. Like a peer-to-peer -peer event, it is going to be their followers, their, the people who subscribe to them, the people who are interested in them, who will be the ones who quite often will be the donors. And then like a telethon, it is done live. And there's often goals that are based on the time, like what time they are within the program. The image here is from one of the most famous video game fundraising pieces, the Desert Bus for Hope. This has been going on for over a decade, but they will be required to do certain things at certain times or try to raise a certain amount of money at certain times. There will be special incentives for you to donate certain amounts so that the gamer might do something funny, might draw a piece of art, might do something silly on, on camera if they get a certain donation of a certain type. And the way I liken this is imagine you had a golf tournament with cameras following every golfer around. And it was like, if you give a thousand dollars to the, on behalf of this golfer, he now has to hit the next ball. Like he's happy Gilmore. That's the type of thing that is happening in video game fundraising. And so it's a very live, very interactive style of fundraising. Now, is it worth it for you? So Dr. Lupo, a famous streamer, as of 2022, has raised over $13 million for St. Jude. In 2020, over $83 million was raised on Twitch. That is the broadcasting platform that tends to be used by gamers. There's also, of course, YouTube. There's a lot of gamers that stream on TikTok, but Twitch tends to be the main one, and that's how much was raised in 2020. It has only increased since then, and there's probably not a lot of end to that increase right now. And the nice thing is you can run an event. You can you can run it yourself and have a bunch of streamers join you. Or you could just with different content creators and help. Now, I like to pick on golf tournaments. The fact of the matter is a lot of charities do them. If you look at the stats, there are 25 million golfers in the United States who golfed in 2021. There, it's an expected 66 million people worldwide. And of course, it requires this massive green space that requires all sorts of water and all sorts of issues around environment versus almost 10 times that play video games in the United States. 215 million gamers in the United States, three and a quarter billion worldwide. And really, it requires the Internet. So there's a lot of capacity, a lot of potential. This is from one of my favorite video games, Rocket League. This is the Rocket League Championship Series. This is actually a stadium full of people watching people play video games. Uh, so if you've never been part of this community, it is very much a, yes, people actually do enjoy pe watching other people play video games. My parents didn't believe that when I told them that when I was a kid. They've had to make a culpa that now because this is the type of thing that happens. So there's large audiences, a lot of people involved. It's definitely a culture in a world. Few expectations managements about this. If you start getting into this, you're not going to make that $13 million overnight. It's going to be like many other peer-to-peer -peer events that you run. The nice thing is it's relatively low cost to get involved in this type of thing. And there's a lot of potential reach. If you reach out to your donors, a lot of them are going to be video gamers. About 70% of people in the United States are video gamers of some sort. You are not held to an annual cycle. So you can do a tournament next week. You can do a tournament this week, whatever you want. You engage with different content creators. You're not held to the annual cycle like you are with a lot of events. It really is about relationships, much like major gift fundraising, much like plan giving fundraising. It's about relationships with those content creators. They're not ATMs, but they are always interested in helping. And it's not just video games. So I talk about video games because it's the main one. But people do a lot of tabletop gaming, tabletop role-playing, like Dungeons & Dragons Live. They'll do art. They'll do music. There's just chatting on Twitch. And sometimes if you get the right people with the right audiences, that's all you need. So to get started, first, you want to understand some of the tools and the culture. So get on, sign up for Twitch. Start following some random channels on Twitch. Look into Discord. If you haven't been using Discord, it is the main chatting tool for gamers. Tiltify is a way of raising money on Twitch as well as other platforms, and then understand a little bit about broadcasting software, like open broadcasting software. Check out some charity streams. So some ones with people I have worked with include the USO, Make-A-Wish Foundation, Children's Hospital of Orange County. They all have gaming programs. They do really good jobs with their gaming fundraising. So check theirs out and get a feel for what they're doing. 
And the big thing is, if you do go down this path, it can't be up down on the side of one's desk. It is an event. It needs the same discipline. It needs the same planning. It needs the same dedication that any other peer-to-peer event would have. That's it. 